Hi and welcome back to the final video in this three part series on writing your own text adventure game in Python. What we are going to do in this video is we will do a little bit of clean up of the code and after that we will look at how we can probably extend this with more commands. So the first clean up that I want to do is to basically take these two global variables and we will wrap them up within a class. I'll just instantiate that there and we'll pass this over to the executor as a parameter. So down here, we'll overwrite the initializer to also pick up that parameter. We'll save it and then call the initializer of the superclass. Now that we've done this, we can now use self.world in all these places because these globals don't exist anymore. So what I'll do is also put in the locations, put it as an empty dict and I'll set that field equal to this dict that we've got over here. All right. Now the, we can see there's some code which keeps repeating. For example, in many places we need to look up the current room like this. So all that code which is repeating, we we'll put that down here. And then we can then reference this as self dot world dot current room. So this will give us the current room, and we can just basically put that everywhere. Okay, so we are now basically taking world as a parameter and everywhere we use self.world instead of using the global. Now the question is what to do about these functions which also use the world and we will just pass them as a parameter. Okay, something like that and when we do a use we'll pass the world down as a parameter like that okay the next thing that we can do is let's add a command so that we can combine items okay, so to add a new command we just create a new function here Combine is going to be a little different from the others in the sense that there may be multiple arguments. So you'll want to say something like combine A with B. And combine will be the command name and A with B as a string would be what is passed as the parameter. 
So the first thing we need to do is get the two item names. So So we'll just split whatever the user types. So if they say combine batteries with flashlight, this will return item name one as batteries and item name two as flashlights. Now they could type something wrong. Like for example, they might just say combine or combine batteries without really giving the full form. So we will catch that and give an error message okay the next thing that we want to do is we need to check whether the user actually has those items which they're combining. So if I say combine batteries with the flashlight, but I don't have either the batteries or the flashlight, then we have a problem. So let us check for that. If they don't have both the items, we print out an error message. Next, we need to do some action on, on combining. And that action will obviously depend on which items are being combined. So like we have on use, we created this on use thing. And what this allows us to do is uh, we can define our own function with our own logic that should happen when you use an item and the same way we can have another function like on combine which would allow us to define some custom logic that needs to be executed when the user combines some items so let's say that that function is called on combine okay we'll pass in the world and we'll also pass in what's the other item. So if I say combine batteries with flashlight, what this code will do is it'll take the batteries and search for the on combine function and it will call that and pass flashlight as a parameter to it. Now, sometimes a person, instead of saying combine batteries with flashlight, might say combine flashlight with batteries. But obviously the flashlight doesn't have that function because that function is defined on the battery. So in case the first item doesn't have an on combine on it, then what we'll do is we'll try again with the second item. So now if on combine is defined on the battery item, then it doesn't matter whether the user types combine flashlight with battery or combine battery with flashlight. If the first one doesn't work, it'll try the other way around. And if both don't work, so neither item has an on combine, then we just give an error. All right, so that's our combine command. And let's just put in some batteries and flashlights and see how it would work out.
Okay, so the next thing we need to think about is what should this load batteries function do? So the first thing is if we try to combine the batteries with something else like if I combine batteries with the rope for instance it shouldn't work. Now what should happen if the user successfully combines? So we picked up the flashlight, we have picked up the batteries. Now we have successfully combined the batteries with the flashlight. So what I am going to do is I am going to set the loaded property to true. So in the beginning for the flashlight we'll say loaded is false okay so we just created a property here for the flashlight and down here if the user successfully loads the batteries we set loaded is equal to true okay and we'll also delete the batteries from the inventory And we'll also print out a message. So now if we try to use the flashlight, let us set up an on use for the flashlight as well. And let's say that down here at the bottom of the well, we will code it such that when you go down the well, if you use the flashlight and the flashlight is loaded, then it allows us to go to the next location. So I'm going to define a new location here, I'll call it the vault. So that's a new location, the vault, and what we're going to do is when you go down the well and you use the loaded flashlight then it will open up an exit and we can walk to the vault. So the first thing we are going to do is check that are you trying to use it in the well? If you are not trying to use it in the well display a message and we will return back. The next thing we need to do is check that the flashlight is loaded. So if the flashlight is not loaded, we'll print that the flashlight doesn't have batteries. Okay. 
Okay, so let's try that out. Let's pick up everything. Now we'll use the flashlight and we are in the right place but the flashlight hasn't been loaded yet so it gives the message that the flashlight doesn't have batteries. Now when we load the batteries using the combine command, now the loaded flag has been set to true. So now when we use the flashlight it works and we've got this passageway going north and if I go north it takes me to the vault. Alright so that's combining items. Now let's say that in the vault this is the final location in the game. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a button down here and what I want is when the user presses this red button so if they say use button then the game should finish. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set up items as before but this button unlike the other items is not something which can be picked up and right? it is fixed to this location. So I'm going to use this fixed property to denote that the item which is fixed cannot be picked up. So we need to do a couple of changes. Firstly, over here, once we get the item, we'll check if the item is fixed. Okay, not all items will have this fixed property so we need to catch the key error if it has the fixed property we then print you cannot pick that up and we go back so a person cannot do something like get button and then roam around the world with this button the next thing we want to do is when we try to use an item so here our use command only allows us to use items which are in the inventory but we might also want to use items which are in the world in the room right for example the button so we'll add a check for that first we'll check if an item is there in the current room and if it is fixed The item exists but it's not a fixed item then it won't allow us to use it okay the last piece of the puzzle is what should happen when we actually press this button what we're going to do now is when you press the button the game should finish and the way that we're going to do that is we'll define our own exception And when you press the button, we'll go ahead and raise that exception. Okay, so if you go ahead and press the button, that exception will be raised and a program will come out of this loop so we'll catch that and we'll print out the message in your game you might have things like traps or monsters which could kill the user if they don't have an item 
or do something wrong. So you can use the same game over exception there as well. Let's try this out. So we can see the red button here and if we use the button then it says congratulations you found the treasure and the game is over.